Everything that's raised naturally is always better. You want to purchase and consume animals that have been raised as naturally as possible. Grass-fed beef is very important to the consumer for lots of reasons. One is it's healthier. Two, it's better for the bay and the environment when cows are grazing on permanent pasture. And three, it keeps money in the local economy. And four, it keeps farmers on the land. Eating is an agricultural act. I think agriculture exists in the world and has impacts on the environment. And we're trying to cook food that, that has the least impacts, but also, you know, when possible, benefits as well. It's a big conversation. So what's happening now is we have a lot of diseases in people that are the result of very poor eating habits. And a lot of that is based on how the food is raised. You know, global warming is now a reality. The health of the Chesapeake Bay is never far from our minds. And I think we are kidding ourselves if we don't acknowledge that the way that we're eating is playing a role in a lot of these outcomes. The best way to build soil health, plant permanent pastures and put cows or sheep. Livestock are the best way to build soil. I think farming is critical to water conservation, water quality, like the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, you, you need to have grass-based farmers. It's one of those things where when you begin to imitate nature, there's these upward spirals of benefits to all the parties involved. Everything we do here has, at the root of it, what's good for this land, what's good for the planet. Pastures will actually draw down carbon through the photosynthesis, store it, uh, process it, turn it into something else. I mean, I like to say my animals are the superheroes because they can turn sunshine into really good meat, cheese, all sorts of fun things. Today we're going to cook what I would consider a great late summer feast, which will feature some of these beautiful Jimmy Nardello peppers, some fresh, bright, sharp um, dandelion greens, some beautiful new potatoes. But the star of our show will be a little bit of pastured beef. We make a lot of decisions about what we serve or don't serve here uh, based on what I've come to understand about the food system. Grazing is definitely what we are looking for what we need more of in our food system, and that's what we're very supportive here at, at Woodbury. My name is Judy Gifford, and I farm with my husband, Robert Fry, who's a veterinarian, and we have St. Bridget's Farm in Kennedyville, Maryland. And St. Bridget is the patron saint of dairy maids and scholars, so my husband's a veterinarian, so he gets the scholar part of it, and I'm the dairy maid. I started dairy farming when I was 40, so it was kind of a midlife crisis. But I just love to be outside, I love to be with my animals, and I really love problem solving. If you're gonna be a farmer, you have to be able to solve problems. Yeah, there was no fencing or anything here when we started, so we drove everything in. It's all by hand. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! For me, farming is an act of liberation because as an African-American male, I, I knew there was a lot of issues that I was going to be confronted with. So the only way that I could ever gain the freedom that I wanted was to be able to feed myself first and I wasn't in a place there in a townhouse in Capitol Hill where I could grow food, so I gravitated towards land. My wife agreed, so we moved out here. It started with a spiritual quest to live closer to a natural lifestyle and to be at peace with nature and everything in it, fueled by the desire to be free. It's a blessing to be able to think and manifest something of your own. I grew up as a normal suburban kid here in Fauquier County, went to high school, had lots of thoughts about what I might like to do in life, and none of them included farming. And it was only a year after I graduated from college that uh, a friend gave my wife and me a book by Wendell Berry. And basically Wendell Berry has convinced me that the true adventure is not in the travel and the novelty, 
but it's in the deeper and deeper and deeper rootedness and intimacy. And intimacy requires time and work. You know, you don't really love a place until you really know a place. When we're talking about, you know, grass-based systems in, in states upstream from the Chesapeake in Maryland and Pennsylvania, for example, out into Virginia, um, you're eventually getting back to the oysters that are growing in the Chesapeake Bay. And that's something, the connection that we've made that, that we can't ignore. So it's real urgent that people start to, to learn about food and about food systems, where their food comes from, how it's processed, what happens to the land that the food is grown on, how are these animals raised, how are they treated, what conditions are they raised under, how are they slaughtered, all of that makes a difference. And people need to understand that because we're so disconnected from our food supply. Turns out the bay is downhill of almost all of our farms. So what we do on farms is critical in terms of water quality and the Chesapeake Bay. This is a monoculture corn. This is corn that will go to feed most of the beef that many people are buying in markets. This is perennial pasture. This is the pasture that my cows and all of the go grass-fed farmers, their cows are grazing perennial grass. Look at the amount of water and soil that is run off here. That should break any farmer's heart. Every one of those soil particles is carrying with it phosphorus and nitrogen, and it's all going to end up on top of oyster beds in the Chesapeake Bay. If we look at our pasture field, you can see the water is infiltrating. Almost nothing is running off. One farmer said to me, wow, that's like getting free irrigation. And if we were to look at the soil biology of these two systems, we would find literally billions of living critters in every teaspoon full of soil under the pasture. Cows were meant to be grazers. That's what they do. That's how they were uh, originally designed. So we really like to have them have their natural behavior and their natural habitat. So our basic tenant from the beginning was cows should be outside as much as possible and eat grass. Our farm is 100% permanent pasture. We do what's called managed intensive grazing with our dairy cows where they go out to a new section after each milking. So they'll go out, they'll graze it down, then we pull them off that and then we allow the regrowth and the roots to get healthy. And so um, the managed intensive grazing is uh, more productive. You get more yield out of your pastures if you do it that way. It's better for the plants and it's better for the soil and then you want diversity of your plants because the different root systems act together. So a long root will do certain things, a root that spreads out does certain things, a tap root will do certain, certain things. The legumes, of course, fix nitrogen and they're critically important to soil health, so we have a lot of clover in our fields. There's so many bacteria, fungi, invertebrates interacting down there and sending messages and working off each other and turning carbon into carbohydrates and. It's just an amazing system. So this is what we intentionally do is you get this. How, how nice is this? Why do you want to go someplace else? You got all, everything you need right here. So it takes three to five years to get a, a pasture like a mixed pasture like this. You know, this is all natural, um, established. And then you have to be careful that you don't overgraze it. So this is a great mixed forage. All of this is intentional because we're primarily first a goat farm. So everything is for the goat's health first. So what we do is we rotate the goats through, they'll drop and deposit manure and do what they do and eat up all the weeds and stuff. They eat what nature has provided and we have a very 
richly varied forage base. Uh, what we have here is what the creator has actually ordained should grow here. So you can never do better than that. A big principle for us, obviously, is to try and imitate how nature works. Uh, and in that, uh, a big principle under that sort of heading is movement. So we're doing a couple things here with all this movement is we're giving them clean ground. That makes their uh, decreased stress in their immune system and all those pathogens that would love for them to be a host, like bacterial and viruses and parasites, we're keeping the host on the run. And that also means we don't need to give them antibiotics because we're giving them a healthy, clean environment. It's putting more tasty, palatable greens in front of their face. So they're gonna be eating more greens, which is going to then make their eggs all the more healthier and, and tasty as well. And if you think about it, this shouldn't be so surprising, right? Because these animals and plants have evolved to thrive symbiotically. And so we're just trying to pay attention to those relationships and work those in har harmony with each other. So it's, it's to the benefit of the land, it's to the benefit of the animals, and then finally it's the benefit to the people that are eating the food. So it's healthier for the humans who eat it. I think that's the most important thing that people need to take away. This is the opposite of factory farming. Good morning. Here's a sizzle, huh? <laughs> Hey, morning, how are you? What I love the most about it is actually seeing the joy on people's faces. They're here to be creative, to think out of the box, to provide something for their family that they get to actually do with their hands. Coming here to the market, I always tell everybody this is kind of like my day off because, you know, yeah, there's a lot of work involved, but it's my social interaction. It's where I get to show off what I do. Cowboy ribeye, that's a beautiful cut of meat. You know, you see the folks walk up and they say, man, I had the best steak I ever had in my life. You can grill them all. But more importantly, you know, they're feeding their family a healthy diet. They're eating healthy. So it's just a win-win for the community, the farmers, and the, and the consumer because everything is just local, fresh, and very good for you. Well, I come here for two or three reasons. One, I like to come to the farmer's market. Secondly, they give really good dog treats that my dog likes. And thirdly, the steak is quite good. It tastes better and, you know, it's nice to buy locally made things that are sustainably produced. Good morning, how are you doing? Good. We are cooking up some, uh, some grass-fed beef from Liberty Meats. And we're going to do stir-fry with some zucchini and some garlic scapes. I love grass-fed meat both for the flavor uh, and for the health benefits. Uh, so we've got Good omega-3, omega-6 uh, fatty acid balance on this. So it's, it's a lot healthier both for us and for the animal, uh, and the environment for that matter. You know, I cook grass-fed the same way that I will cook other meats. Um, I think the, the biggest advantage really is in the flavor that you get. It is much more complex and rich and interesting. Uh, and so you can throw a lot more flavor at it than I might with, say, a corn-fed beef and we are ready to do some eating. That looks delicious. Mm. Very Most you. of my customers have sought me out specifically because of the health reasons. They don't just want grass fed, they want grass finished. And there's a huge difference. For me, it's still kind of the holy grail. There's a range, an entire spectrum, I guess you could say, of, of grass fed and finished, grass fed and grain finished. Uh, but basically, we're looking for beef that spent the vast majority of its life out on open pasture. And then we're going to go in very, very carefully with our ribeye. The key with grass-fed beef is that it tends to cook a little more quickly. It tends to not to have the marmalization of the fat content that, that grain-finished or grain-fed beef has. So the one thing you need to keep in mind is to uh, pay attention to your cooking times and try not to overcook it. It's clear to me that, that one of the keys uh, when it comes to beef and the meat that we're eating is we need to eat less. Less, higher quality, more thoughtfully sourced, more delicious, more appreciated meat. Okay. If it's going to be a part of our diet, that's, I think that's, how it, that's, that's what we need. I don't think we're quite at the point yet where we fully appreciate what it means to engage with a local food system. 
to support a local food system, to participate in a local food system. One of the things that we're at risk of losing is our local farmers doing the hard work of farming, growing food for us to eat. Our economy is what I would say a true economy. When a consumer buys our food, they are getting to participate in all the benefits that we are providing to all these different, you know, the animal, to the lands, the community, to the farmers, um, and of course to the consumer themselves. Because when you raise animals to be healthy and to imitate their natural systems, it's impossible for those animals and that food to not be radically different in terms of its nutrition and health to the person. Why buy the beef in the supermarket when you can buy from your neighbor, know where that animal was raised and how it was treated, and keep money in the local economy? It's just uh, a win-win for everybody uh, if consumers will just take a little extra time, maybe pay a little extra money to buy a better product and help the planet and their local community at the same time. But back to your question about why you should eat animals that are raised naturally, the bottom line is it's better for your health, it's also better for the health of the planet. So to make a better world for everyone, not just ourselves, but seven generations into the future, we have to take on the responsibility of doing everything we can to heal this planet by actually respecting the natural order. Grass-based farming, it just lends to an overall healthier ecosystem and a healthier planet. It's the sponge that holds everything together, and we need more sponge. <laughs> nature works. That's the, that's the hashtag, nature works. <laughs> Actually, it is. Yeah, it is. Nature works. And what I have here are, like I said, these beautiful dandelion greens and our vegetables. So then roasted peppers, a little bit of garlic here for good luck. Let's eat.